you've been married for eight years, with two children, ages five and six. Throughout this time, you've deeply loved your wife, admiring her not only as a person but as an amazing mother who holds your family together. From your perspective, everything seemed to be in order, life appeared perfect. However, everything took a sudden turn when, during your daughter's birthday celebration, you noticed a text on your wife's phone saying, I love you more. At first, she explained it was from a coworker she'd been helping, and given the joyful environment of the birthday celebration with family and friends, you didn't press the matter. The next day, however, she revealed the truth. She confessed that, over the past six months, she had developed feelings for someone else. This revelation shook you deeply. Your wife explained that her feelings for this other person developed when you were going through a difficult period. She expressed that the love and emotional support she needed at the time wasn't coming from you, even though you had no idea she felt this way. Despite the changes you've since made, becoming a better father and trying to fix the issues you've faced, she still isn't completely happy in the relationship. She says life is too short and that she's looking for a deeper happiness that she hasn't been able to find in your marriage. According to her, this other person may not be the answer either, but she's willing to explore what she feels. You feel blindsided by this. Your marriage had always appeared strong from the outside. Cheating was the one thing that, from the very beginning of your relationship, you both said would break you. Now, you find yourself in a heartbreaking situation that you never imagined for your family. You asked your wife to share what's going on with her family so you could also inform yours, but this is her burden to explain first. At the same time, you're devastated by how this might affect your children, given that both you and your wife come from broken families, something you always wanted to avoid for your own kids. After her initial confession, things continued to spiral. You started digging into phone records and eventually uncovered that the other person she's been involved with is your son's coach. When confronted, she didn't stop seeing him, further deepening the hurt. In December, she claimed she ended the relationship, saying she wanted to work things out with you. However, despite your best efforts to rekindle your relationship, her behavior has left you doubting her sincerity. You found pictures and messages, including naked selfies she sent to him, as well as intimate details about their time together. These discoveries have made it impossible for you to fully trust her again. Whenever you try to discuss the affair, arguments ensue. While you've promised to try to move forward, it's a struggle because the images and memories of her actions are still fresh in your mind. Her parents, both of whom have cheated in their past relationships, are siding with her, claiming it's unfair for you to keep bringing up the affair. It feels like you're being made out to be the bad guy, even though you've stayed faithful and tried to hold the family together. Recently, you even caught her at your family's condo with her affair partner. Seeing his belongings and her emerging from the bedroom they shared was the final straw. Even then, when confronted, she deflected blame onto you, suggesting that if you'd communicated better, maybe she wouldn't have been with him that night. The emotional weight of this is overwhelming. You want to be present for your children, but the pain makes it hard to focus on them as you struggle with the betrayal. You're unsure of how to proceed, caught between the desire to protect your kids from a broken home and the reality that the marriage may no longer be salvageable. After your discovery of your wife's ongoing affair, you asked her to sleep in one of the children's rooms, but she refused, insisting that the bed was hers and she would sleep where she wanted. This led to even more emotional tension, especially since you had already taken steps to distance yourself from her after the painful discoveries. You've been seeking legal counsel, leaving messages for lawyers, and know that abandoning the home is not an option. Yet, you find it almost unbearable to be in the same space as your wife after everything you've uncovered. Following advice from others, you adopted a strategy of grey rock and disengaged emotionally from her. However, this approach may have driven her deeper into her affair, ultimately leading you to the decision to divorce her. This choice is final in your mind, and while it's difficult, you know there's no going back. After catching your wife and her affair partner together at your family condo, you've maintained no contact with her, following your lawyer's advice. Despite this, your wife sent you messages expressing regret, saying she hadn't asked for a second chance, but was now willing to go to therapy, share her phone location, and try to rebuild your relationship. However, her actions, like continuing to sleep in the master bedroom, have not aligned with her words. You discovered more details about her affair, including that her partner is a local landscaper, and even received a call from him telling you to stop contacting his employer. On top of this, your wife's mother has reached out, expressing sympathy and acknowledging how devastating the situation is for you. But you're determined to keep your distance from her and her family, letting your lawyer handle communication going forward. You've been preparing for your next legal steps, securing an appointment with a lawyer, and trying to distract yourself by looking for a new house. 
you've come to terms with the fact that, despite your lingering emotions and the pain of losing someone you once considered your best friend and lover, divorce is the right path for you. Trust has been completely shattered, and for your own self-respect and mental health, you know that moving forward without her is necessary. Even as you try to move on, new revelations keep surfacing. You found that your wife had changed her affair partner's name in her phone and continued communicating with him through Snapchat, even while claiming she was trying to repair your marriage. She had lied repeatedly, deceiving you on multiple levels. On her birthday, she chose to spend time with him rather than with you, confirming your worst fears. As if this weren't enough, your wife had been acting suspiciously with her phone, blocking you on social media, changing lock codes, and generally keeping things secret. Despite these red flags, she would sometimes try to love bomb you, pulling you back in with promises of being a family again. These cycles left you emotionally exhausted and unable to trust her at all. On your birthday, you made the decision to go out with her, hoping to reconnect. Things went well at first, but then an argument broke out over her affair. The argument escalated to the point where she physically assaulted you, hitting you on the side of your head and knocking your phone out of your hand as you tried to record the interaction. She called the police, but no charges were pressed. You willingly slept upstairs that night to avoid further conflict. The next day, your wife took things further by filing a protective order against you, preventing you from contacting her or your kids. While this was painful, you realized that the best course of action was to file for divorce. During the court hearing, your wife admitted that you were not a threat to her or the children, and that you were a good father. This statement will help you in the upcoming custody battle, especially since you're aiming for a 50-50 split. You've since moved into a family home where you can be with your kids, and have set clear boundaries with your wife about responsibilities and care for the children. Despite your wife's continued attempts to win you back, including making gestures of reconciliation, you know that it's impossible to rebuild trust. You've caught her going back to her affair partner multiple times, and the cycle of deception has taken its toll on your mental and emotional health. Though you still feel immense pain, sadness, and fear about the future, you've come to accept that the relationship cannot be salvaged. You recognize that the decision to divorce, while agonizing, is necessary for your own well-being. The betrayal runs too deep for forgiveness, and as much as it hurts to break up your family, you're standing up for yourself and your future. You're choosing to prioritize your own healing and move forward, even though the memories of her infidelity and lies continue to haunt you. This journey has been filled with heartbreak and challenges, but you're determined to stay strong for your kids and rebuild your life without her. For about the last year, my wife had been feeling off. She was late for her period by about a month, which prompted her to take a pregnancy test during her lunch break. To our surprise and joy, the test came back positive. She decided to wait until she got home to share the news with me. However, just a few hours later, she began to bleed. Distressed, she left work and called her sister, who is a registered nurse. Her sister suggested that she might be experiencing a miscarriage and advised her on what steps to take next. When my wife came home, I could see that she was visibly upset. The moment she told me what was happening, I was completely taken aback. It felt like a cruel joke that she would find out she was pregnant only to begin miscarrying just hours later, especially since it was April Fool's Day. The next morning, she scheduled an appointment with the doctor we had seen previously. The appointment was set for today, Friday. As the week dragged on, we both dreaded the day. It felt as though a dark cloud loomed over our home, casting a shadow over everything we did. The anxiety and uncertainty weighed heavily on both of us. I realized how little I understood about female anatomy and pregnancy, and I panicked at the thought of her possibly needing a DNC, dilation and curatage, procedure. I also worried about her mental state, fearing she might feel inadequate as a woman for not being able to carry the pregnancy to term. In the days leading up to the appointment, I hardly slept, consumed by worry. When we arrived this morning, the first thing the doctor did was perform an ultrasound. As soon as the image appeared on the monitor, I saw a tiny flicker of rhythmic light. Seeing that little heartbeat took my breath away. For the first time in my life, I found myself crying in front of my wife and the doctor, overwhelmed by emotion. To summarize the outcome, the doctor confirmed that my wife was almost seven weeks pregnant and that both she and the baby were doing well. The doctor reassured us that what we had experienced so far was not uncommon, and he emphasized that if the baby made it to 12 weeks, our chances of having a successful pregnancy would significantly increase. We had gone into the appointment expecting to hear sad news but left with a newfound sense of hope. I know that many women experience similar challenges, and I recall a previous doctor telling us that it was highly unlikely my wife would have a viable pregnancy at all. While we're still not completely out of the woods, I have an inexplicable feeling that this is our time.
Even if this little bean doesn't make it to a full-term baby, we still have hope. Moving forward, I plan to pamper my wife and support her as best as I can. I have been emotional all day, filled with gratitude for this moment. I'm now 40, and my wife is 35. We had our 12-week doctor visit today, and I'm thrilled to share that my wife is currently 12 weeks and 3 days pregnant. The doctor reported that both mom and baby are healthy and happy. He has been incredibly supportive in addressing the concerns and anxieties we've faced during this journey. This whole experience has been overwhelming in the best way possible. Over the past few years, I struggled with feelings of hopelessness due to sudden deaths, family breakups, and various life challenges. There were nights when I prayed for an end to my suffering, feeling too cowardly to take matters into my own hands. However, now I've rediscovered a sense of purpose and determination. I am committed to providing this child with a joyful life, eager to teach them the things I was never taught. My primary goal is to improve my health so I can be there for my child throughout their life. I want to ensure that they grow up educated, confident, empathetic, understanding, compassionate, happy, and kind. I already love them so much, and I can't wait to meet them. November can't come soon enough. This experience has taught me that there is always hope. We were once told that having a child might be unlikely, but if it can happen for us, it can happen for anyone. We had a gender reveal party when my wife was 20 weeks along and were overjoyed to discover that we are expecting a sweet little girl. This revelation filled us with immense happiness, and we couldn't stop smiling. Shortly after, we had a doctor's appointment for the 20-week checkup, during which the anatomy scan showed that the baby was perfectly healthy. She had all 10 fingers and toes and was estimated to be about a third larger than average for that stage of development. At the end of the appointment, our doctor shared that everything looked great, which filled us with even more joy and relief. We feel incredibly blessed and hopeful as we look forward to welcoming our daughter into the world. During a recent doctor's appointment, we received concerning news regarding my wife's pregnancy. The ultrasound revealed that her cervix was shorter than the doctor would have liked, and she had already dilated by a centimeter. My wife remained remarkably calm, but inside, I felt as if a volcano were erupting. Given the circumstances, the doctor decided to admit her to the hospital to perform a cervical circlage, a procedure intended to support the pregnancy by stitching the cervix closed. The surgery was scheduled for the following day, and we spent the night anxious yet hopeful. After the procedure, everything went incredibly well. Both our doctor and the surgeon seemed optimistic about the outcome, though we knew we weren't completely out of the woods yet. After spending four days in the hospital, we were finally allowed to go home, but my wife was instructed to remain on bed rest for the next eight weeks. Additionally, we were advised to return to the doctor every two weeks until our little girl arrived. The plan was to remove the circlage between 36 and 37 weeks, allowing nature to take its course afterward. Today, we officially reached 22 weeks in the pregnancy. My wife and I are grateful for the support, well wishes, prayers, and good vibes we've received from our friends and family on Reddit during this journey. We hope that the remainder of the pregnancy will be uneventful, and my next update will celebrate the arrival of our miracle little angel. Just two days after my last post, at just past 20 weeks, we went for another doctor's appointment. To our shock, we discovered that my wife had dilated another centimeter and that her cervix was quite short. She was immediately admitted to the hospital, where the circlage was performed to help hold the pregnancy in place. Those few days in the hospital were filled with fear, but fortunately, everything turned out fine, and the pregnancy progressed as expected. The circlage was scheduled for removal on October 28, and based on the challenges we faced, both we and the doctor anticipated that our little girl might arrive a bit earlier than her expected due date of November 24. We even joked about the possibility of a Halloween baby. Fast forward to a little past the 34-week mark. On Wednesday, October 16, which also happens to be my birthday, I was abruptly awakened at 4.30 a.m. by my wife, who urgently told me that her water had just broken. At first, I thought she was joking, but the look in her eyes made it clear that she was serious. We rushed to the hospital, and approximately 12 hours later, at 4.16 p.m., our precious daughter, whom we named Tiger Lily, made her grand entrance into the world. Remarkably, she was born in the same hospital where I had been born 41 years prior. Tiger Lily weighed 5 pounds and 4 ounces and measured 18 inches long. Because she was born prematurely, it was necessary for her to be transferred to the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, NICU. In the NICU, she was placed on a bubble CPAP machine for breathing assistance and was given preventative antibiotics through and for. Additionally, she had a feeding tube inserted and was placed in an incubator to keep her warm. Despite the initial challenges, Tiger Lily has been exceeding expectations. 
In just 40 hours, her feeding intake has tripled, and she is regulating her own body temperature. Today, the doctors decided to take her off the CPAP machine, which is a significant milestone in her progress. As we gaze at our daughter, we are utterly captivated by her beauty. Her features are so well-defined, it feels as if she were sculpted from marble by a master Italian artist. Her eyes are a brilliant blue, reminiscent of the Caribbean Sea, and her skin is as soft and flawless as freshly bloomed rose petals. She radiates an aura of a star, and we are so in love with her that we can hardly take our eyes off of her. My wife and I want to express our heartfelt thanks to everyone who has followed our family journey. We deeply appreciate the kind words, prayers, and good vibes sent our way. Much love to you all from our family on Reddit.